Hey, I'm Alan Blue, and I'm a Bible teacher by the grace of God. Today we're going to answer the question, can we be sinless and can we be perfect? When I, when I say we, I'm talking about Christians. Can Christians be sinless and perfect? Uh, I, had, I had a guy contact me and he asked me, he said, uh, are you teaching that uh, sinless perfection? And I said, well, if it's in the Bible, I'm teaching it. <laughs> So, of course, it's, it wasn't in the Bible, so I had to do an internet search, and I, and I, and I, and I noticed there's like three, 300,000 something articles on sinless perfection and whether or not we can be uh, sinless and perfect. And uh, most of the articles are against it. Uh, so, so I thought I'd do a video teaching on it. Can Christians be sinless and perfect? So let's get started. According to what's written in the Bible. Okay, actually, we should all be testing everything we hear. We should test everything we hear, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. We should test everything, okay? Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. We should test everything we hear. As a matter of fact, uh, according to Acts chapter 17, verse 11, the people of Berea tested, or they checked behind Paul and Silas. Uh, so, uh... Uh, Acts uh, chapter 17 verse 11. They checked behind Paul and Silas to make sure that what they were saying was true. And even the Ephesians, according to Revelation chapter 2 verse 2, uh, tested apostles and found them to be false. Revelation chapter 2 uh, verse 2. So it should be commonplace to uh, test to test what we hear and hold on to the good. Test what we hear and hold on to the good. That should be commonplace among Christians. You know, the only reason, because the only reason to distort what's in this book, according to Acts chapter 20, uh, verse 29 through verse 32, is to draw disciples after ourselves. So the only, the only reason to, uh, I'm just going to use this same line, Acts chapter uh, 20, uh, 29 through 32, 32, the only reason to Distort this truth is to draw disciples after ourselves or build our own crowds, okay? The bottom line is, though, if we were all preaching what's in our Bibles, we'd all be preaching the same things. There may be some difference depending on the version of the Bible, but we'd, we would, it would be recognizable. What we were preaching would be in line with what everybody else is preaching. Uh, uh, imagine that. So what does the Bible say about being uh, sinless and perfect? Can we be sinless and can we be perfect? Well... Let me show you these verses, but also let me show you, too, uh, why there's so many people teaching different things, okay? And, and that, that will help you more than anything, okay? So can we be uh, sinless, and can we be perfect, okay? Let's look at, first, let's look at 1 Peter, 1 Peter uh, chapter 4, verse 1 through verse 5, okay? And I'm going to read that to you real quick, 1 Peter Chapter 4, verse 1 through verse 5. He says, Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Imagine that. He who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Okay? Can we cease from sin? Yes, we can, according to that verse. Is that in this lifetime? Let's just keep reading. Verse 2, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. Imagine that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Verse 3, for we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable, abominable idolatries. Verse 4, in regard to these, they think it strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. Verse 5, they will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. So can Christians be sinless? Most certainly we can. In this lifetime? Yes, sir. Most certainly we can. According to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1 through verse 5, test that verse in your version of the Bible. Test it. Check it. Okay? Why would we want to uh, always speak according to what, uh, what our Bible says? Well, first off, if, if we speak against the faith, 
1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20 and 21, we can fall away from the faith. Just by speaking against the faith, uh, we can fall away from it. Imagine that. Not only that, though, but we're, we're supposed to be. Already, we're supposed to be speaking in line with the faith, according to Romans uh, chapter 10, verse 6 through verse 8. These are the verses right before the verses we use to, to lead people to Christ, to get people saved. These verses say that uh, the righteousness of faith, uh, according to the righteousness of faith, there are things that we should say and things that we should never say. Okay? And, and this, is, this, is, this is God's standard for being righteous. Okay? We have to submit to God's standard, and back up in verse 4, same chapter, chapter 10, verse 4, the only difference between the people of Israel uh, that Paul was, was that Paul was speaking to, uh, and Paul was Paul submitted to God's righteousness. Paul submitted to God's way of righteousness. We have check that verse out. Romans chapter ten verse four. We have to submit to God's way of being righteous. And God's way of being righteous is to always speak in line with the faith. Okay, there are things that we should say and things that we should not say or should never say, but we should always speak in line with the faith. If we speak in line, if we believe it and speak in line with the faith, then we are speaking with the spirit of faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. If we do not speak in line with the faith, but according to the views of this world, then we are speaking uh, with the spirit of error, according to 1 John chapter 4, verse 5 through verse 6. That's how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Not only this, okay, but Jesus said that by our words we will be acquitted and by our words that we would be condemned. Matthew, okay, Matthew chapter 12, verse 36 and 37. By our words we'll be acquitted and by our words uh, we can be condemned. Imagine that. Do we believe that? Okay, that brings up question number two. Can we be perfect? Well, in order to be perfect uh, in in man's eyes, I guess we'd have to be Superman or uh, maybe some uh, model somewhere or something, okay? But in God's eyes, let's look at James, uh, James chapter 3, verse 2. James chapter 3, verse 2. Let me read that to you. James chapter 3, verse 2. He says... For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able to bridle his whole body. We all stumble in many things, but if anyone does not stumble in word, in what he says, he's a perfect man, able to bridle his whole body. Like I said, being perfect in God's eyes is to always speak the right words. Imagine that. To always speak in line with what's in this book. Okay? And we need to be perfect in God's eyes not in man's eyes. We all stumble in many ways, some Bibles say, uh, but if a man is never at fault in what he says, he's a perfect man, able to bridle or able to control his whole body. That's one of the methods we're used in order to stop sinning. If my body has a problem, say my body has a problem with alcohol, which I used to have, or drugs, or, or, or slander, or whatever else, okay? Uh, then my words, through my words, I can change my body according to that promise. Now, if you don't believe it, you can't receive it. And that's James chapter 1, uh, verse 5 through verse 7. Whatever part of this actually you don't believe, you don't have to worry about receiving. Okay? But understand this. Words have the power of life and death. Uh, words, simple words, Proverbs chapter 18, uh, verse 21. Even to the point of healing, Proverbs chapter 12, verse Verse 18, simple words have the power uh, of life and death. Our words can set the whole course of our life on fire. Again, that's James and chapter 3, verse 6. Our words can set the whole course of our life on fire. Okay? Let me give you another verse along that line. Uh, good and bad days in the future are partially set up by our words. First Peter First Peter, uh, chapter three, verse ten, uh, through verse twelve. Good and bad days are set up by our words, the words that we speak every day. 
Imagine that. So just by learning to speak these words out of this book, I can gain, we can gain control over our bodies. Not only that, but Jesus said that if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish. John, John 15 verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish. How do we abide in Jesus? We have to obey his commands. John 15 verse 10. So if we do that, if we obey his commands, plus make this word remain in us, the, then that will seriously improve our prayer life. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> Ask whatever you wish. Check that verse out. Check that verse out in your own version of the Bible. Now, let me show you what happens, okay? So I, I, I got on the internet, and there's like 300,000 articles. Uh, uh, some people speaking totally against these verses that are written in their own Bible. And so how does that happen? Okay, well, let me show you this. This right here will really help you. Okay, let me show you this. Okay, John chapter 5, verse 38. John 5, 38. John 5, 38. Jesus said, if you don't believe him, if you don't believe what he's telling you, his word is not going to remain in you. Now, if this word doesn't remain in us, it's going to be very easy to speak against it. Okay, imagine that. If, if, if you don't believe some of these verses, they're not going to remain in you. If you don't believe that we can cease from sin, according to 1 Peter 4, 1, okay, it's not going to remain in you. And if it doesn't remain in you, uh, you're gonna, you can easily speak against it. Why? Because there is a way that seems right to a man. Proverbs, uh, chapter 16, verse 25. That's also 14, verse 12. There's a way that seems right to us. But in the end, it leads, it leads to death. So in other words, we, if we just sat around without this word to guide us, if we just sat around thinking about what to do, that path would lead to death. Okay? We have to deny that path, deny ourselves. Matthew uh, chapter 16, 24 and 25. It's also in John chapter 12. Chapter 12, verse 25. If we just sat around and thought about what to do without this to guide us, okay, then that path would actually lead to death. So we need this word living in us to guide us. Okay? Actually, actually uh, Acts chapter 20, verse 32. The word of God itself is able to build us up and give us an inheritance among those who are sanctified. And this word can actually sanctify us. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. John 17, 17. Okay? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Or set you free. Actually, the start of that is, if you hold to my teachings. Uh, John 8, 31 through 37. If you hold to my teachings, you're really my disciples, then you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Okay? A lot, there's a lot of Christians today believing that they're free, and there's songs on the radio saying that we're free, but we're not all free. Okay? You should, if you hold to my teachings, you're really my disciples, then you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Make you free from what? Uh, John 8, 35, make you free from being a slave to sin. Imagine that. Okay? The Pharisees were ready to kill Jesus, according to John chapter 8, verse 37. Why were they ready to kill Jesus? Because they were bad people? No, the Pharisees worshiped God, okay? They didn't submit to God's way of being righteous, Romans chapter 10, verse 4, but they worshiped God. Why were they ready to kill Jesus? Because this word had no place in their hearts, okay? But if you put this word in your heart, it will change you uh, from the inside out. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. The word of God works all by itself, on the inside of those who believe it. Imagine that. So if, if we put this word in, it's going to change us. If we don't believe it, it's not going to remain in us. Okay? Whatever you don't believe is not going to remain in you. If you don't believe that Christians can be perfect, then guess what? You're going to speak against it. Because naturally, uh, Proverbs 16.25, naturally you don't think we can be perfect. Okay? But the Bible says that we can Okay, Jesus even said, go and be perfect, Matthew 5, 48. Uh, Paul taught everyone, uh, ta ta everyone Paul taught, he warned them and taught them to the point of being perfect. Uh, Colossians, Colossians chapter 1, verse 28. 
and 29. Okay? Learn that verse for yourself. Not only that, but in, in most Bibles, Ephesians, Ephesians um, chapter 4, verse 11 through 14. Uh, Christ gave some to be apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists. Why? To uh, prepare uh, God's people for the work of service. Till we all come to unity, oneness in faith, oneness in knowledge, to a perfect man. Uh, but some of, the, some of the newer Bibles have changed that to, to, be, to read something else. That's not a problem, but if you have one of those Bibles that have it in there, it's, it's there. Okay? We should let patience, and, and this, is, this is in line with suffering. We should let patience have its perfect work in us. James chapter 1, uh, verse 2 through verse 4. Uh, so that we will be perfect and complete, or mature and complete. Whatever your Bible says there in James chapter 2, verse 4. Suffering is a part of, if we're willing to suffer, uh, we can cease from sin. If, how would we suffer? First off, we'd have to deny ourselves, pick up our cross daily and follow Him. We'd have to follow this. Not only that, but we're called to suffer. 1 Peter uh, chapter 2, verse 21. Also, chapter 3, uh, verse 8 and verse 9, we're called to suffer. It's a part of our calling. It's actually being granted to us the ability to suffer, Philippians. Check this verse out, Philippians chapter 1, verse 29. It will flat out shock you. If you don't, if you don't know anything about suffering, these verses will shock you. Okay, The Thessalonians were considered worthy of the kingdom of God. Why? Why? Because their, their love was increasing, and I mean, their faith was increasing, their love was abounding, even through the persecutions and trials that they were suffering. Okay? 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians, chapter 1, verse 3 through verse 5. Check that out. That's why they were going to be counted worthy of the kingdom of God. Okay? Because their faith was growing, even through the persecutions and trials that they were suffering. Okay, and everyone who chooses to live godly will be persecuted. So if you if 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 you decide to do what we're talking about here, you're going to be persecuted. Okay, Second Timothy chapter three verse twelve. Guess who we're going to be persecuted by? Okay, children of the slave woman. Galatians, Galatians, uh, uh, chapter four verse twenty nine and verse thirty. People who are not free in Christ always persecute those who are. I'm talking about Christians here. Christians who are not free in Christ persecute those who are free in Christ. Not only that, but if we go in the direction we're supposed to be going in, according to John, uh, chapter 15, verse 18, through verse 20, if we head in the direction we're supposed to be going in, then the people of this world are going to hate us. Imagine that. <laughs> the people of this world are going to hate us. Imagine that. Now, let me, let me just show you again what happens. The word goes out. Let's just say the parable of the sower. The word goes out. Uh, and the parable of the sower is Matthew. And I'm just going to abbreviate these. Matthew chapter uh, 13, verse 18, down through verse, uh, I think, 21. And then you have Luke uh, chapter 8, verse 11 through 15. And then you have Mark. Um, Mark chapter 4, I think verse 13 down through verse 20. Okay, the parable of the sword. The word goes out. Okay, just like today, we've, we've read some word. We read 1 Peter chapter 1, I mean chapter 4, 1 through 4. And we read James chapter 3 verse 2. So that word goes out. Okay, understand this right here. Even if you believe it, even if you receive the word that, are, that we mentioned today, the devil can come and snatch the word away. Okay, read this parable of the sword. The devil can come and snatch the word out of our hearts. So in other words... You could return to the same video tomorrow, and it'll be just like you never saw it. You never learned these verses. And, that, and that's why I'm saying write these verses down. Learn them for yourself. Force yourself to retain them. Okay? Make yourself retain these verses. Okay, so the word goes out. The devil can snatch it out. All right? Now, let's just say you receive the word with joy. Then persecution comes, okay, because of the word. All right? Uh, because you're trying to change. You're trying to be free in Christ. All right? Persecution comes. So we've got to stand up under the persecution in order to receive it, in order to keep it, okay? With the measure we use, it, it is measured to us. Right after the uh, parable of the sword in Mark 4, go down to verse 24 and 25. Take heed, take heed how you listen, how you hear. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you. 
Imagine that. The third thing that can happen according to the parable of the sower is, is that even if we receive the word, even if it's living on the inside of us, then the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and make it unfruitful. In other words, uh, if the word's living in me, uh, because I might decide I want something in the flesh over here or chase after something in the flesh or fit in with the people of the world, I'm, I'm gonna, it's going to make the word in me unfruitful. I'm not going to go in the direction the word is telling me to go. I'm going to go towards the world. And, and, and that's how that works. But if we become a friend of the world, we're going to become God's enemy. Okay? James uh, chapter 4, verse 4. It's just that simple, okay? We have to keep in step with the Spirit. A lot of people think that, okay, now that we have the Spirit, it's an automatic thing. Well, no, it's not an automatic thing. We can still choose to follow the ways of the world. Even in James 4, he says, we can choose to become a friend of the world and make the Spirit jealous. James chapter 4, verse 5. Not only that, but we can grieve the Holy Spirit. Ephesians uh, chapter 4, verse 30. We can grieve the Holy Spirit. We can insult the Spirit of grace. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 29. Okay? So in other words, we don't have to follow the Spirit. Okay? But if the Spirit is living on the inside of us, then we can't be in the flesh. Okay? Check this verse out. Romans uh, chapter 8, verse 9. If the Spirit is living in us, we can't be in the flesh. Read the verse. Okay? There's two places the Spirit can be. With us and in us. John 14, uh, John uh, 14, verse 17. Two places the Spirit can be with us and in us. Okay? So learn, learn these verses for yourself. Okay? We need to speak in line with the faith. If we don't speak in line with the faith, how can we be righteous by faith? We can't. Not only that, we can fall away from the faith. Not only that, but we're not going to be in the position to where we can ask anything. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish. Imagine that. Okay? Can we be sinless? Yes, we can. It doesn't matter if anybody in this country, if nobody in this country is sinless. It doesn't matter. The bottom line is, trust God. Trust God. Trust what God says in your version of the Bible. Okay? Trust God. Never speak against the faith so that you can be righteous by faith. Never speak against a faith so that you can be righteous by faith. Make this word live on the inside of you so that you can be set free from sin. So that you can be set free from being a slave uh, to sin. Okay? My name is Alan Ballou. If I can help with anything, let me know. May the Lord bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name, amen.